Let's talk about World War III, shall we? Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stu, tell me what you think of this cut one. Ukraine will become a member uh, of NATO. Uh, our purpose at the summit is to help build a bridge to that membership uh, and uh, to create a clear pathway for, uh, for Ukraine uh, moving forward. No! Oh. Okay. All righty then. Oh, that's great. Hmm. Now, Stu, can you help me out? What was it that Russia said yeah. that the reason they were going to war was because of Ukraine potentially getting into NATO? Yeah. And mm-hmm. so the one thing they didn't want us to do was to push for Ukraine to be in NATO. And so the the goal of this big global conference in Europe uh, yesterday was to put Ukraine in NATO. Okay, this sounds bad. Yeah. Now, look, <laughs> Russia shouldn't be able to tell the rest of the world who gets in NATO and who doesn't. Right. But, but in this moment, <laughs> yes. okay, yes. in the current moment that right. we're in, right. potentially an answer somewhat like, you know, we're in the middle of a, a war right now. I don't know if anyone's noticed this. Mm-hmm. Perhaps uh, we don't want to inflame tensions. Yeah. We'll yeah. discuss this a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, of course, our policy has not changed, yeah, right? Something yeah, like that. Where yeah, you're not necessarily yeah. – because right. the policy has been they want Ukraine, right. and, and, and and the president has not changed that policy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Blinken can't come out and say that's not the policy anymore. But he could probably be a little bit more judicious with the way he talks about this in the middle of hundreds of thousands of yeah. people dying on a battlefield. Yeah, okay. All right, good. Good okay. safety okay. tip. Mm-hmm. Now, you're not the Secretary of State. I am so. not. I'm thinking I might be qualified for it after today, though. <laughs> Like, I kind of thought I was way too much of an idiot to get that job, right. but that I don't might think be the main are. qualification. Yeah, I don't think you are. Mm-hmm. I don't think you are. Now, at the same table, at the same time, um, the president of France, Macron, has been saying lately he's thinking about sending troops. Now, remember, another thing Russia has said is, you guys get involved, then you're involved. And I target you as well. So Macron, now help me out because we may have slipped through another wormhole. No. Okay. In the universe that I went to sleep in last night, France were wusses. (laughs) France never, I mean, they were not exactly fight. They were lovers. They weren't fighters. And they were the joke in the universe I came from that like... (laughs) France, you know, will will surrender to your suitcase. So, oh, oh, uh, not a, not a carry on. It's got to have to be a full checkable bag. Well, not necessarily. No, not okay. necessarily. You may be from a different universe than I am. Okay, that's okay. True. Uh, have we slipped through a wormhole? How is it that France, of all places, is beating their chest, going, you know what? We got a military and we're going to use it. When did that happen? Why are we listening to France? Why? Why? Okay, so Macron also said that he knows for sure Russia's going to target the Paris Olympics. They're going to do it. They're going to do it. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so that's... uh. That's good. Now, this has not been a problem at all for oil prices. I mean, yes, it went up to $90 a barrel. But that probably has something to do with um, Iran getting ready to attack Israel and full-fledged war breaking out in the Middle East, which would drive the price of oil through the roof. Could anybody say $200 a barrel? By the way, America, the economy is built for $100 to $110 a barrel. It doesn't survive long, the economy, anything over that. That's what we've already priced in. If you remember 2008, it was this sustained, what was it, Stu, $130, $130 or $40 a barrel? That seems high from my memory. I think it was a little lower than that. A little actually. lower than but that. With inflation, it would certainly be at least that high. Right. So <laughs> with inflation. <laughs> 110 dollars in those days is like, you know, yeah, 190, like a... 200, 3,000, whatever it is today. Uh so 
it was a sustained over 120. And I would I had been warning about it. You you can't with everything is so delicate right now. You cannot handle that it will break the back of the economy. Well, it did. And we had the 2008. We're talking now possibly $200 a barrel. $200 a barrel. And what is our government doing? They're saying they're not going to fill the strategic oil reserve because it's now too expensive. I don't know. I say we bite the bullet. We don't seem to have a problem sending billions of dollars overseas. For like I don't know. France needs animal crackers. Let's get them. Let's get the animal crackers to France quick. They need $10 billion for animal crackers. We seem to find the money to do whatever we want. Why can't we find the money to fill the strategic oil reserve? From the people who brought you Afghanistan comes an empty strategic oil reserve. Who would have seen it coming? And, of course, no weapons, because we gave them all to other countries. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah, have that yeah. going you on have as that well. Going. Oh, mm-hmm. and, by the way, because of corruption and everything else in our government, uh, all of our F-35s, eh, only 25% of them are mission capable. But don't worry, it was just the most expensive airplane ever built. So it's more like a, an F-9 or an F-8. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what we have left. Yeah, <laughs> okay. if the F-8s didn't work. <laughs> right. Um so uh, also we have Anthony Blinken yesterday. I love Anthony. I love the I love the fact that his name is not Anthony. No, it's Anthony. Anthony. Hey everybody, it's me, Anthony. <laughs> I'm over here to tell you, you know what? Israel is becoming indistinguishable from a mass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they're doing too many bada bings and bada booms. And they got to stop the bada booms. I might support him if he sounded like that. <laughs> you know, I might I be would okay least, with it. it. I would at least enjoy this trip to World War III. Sure. You know what I mean? It's a much more fun hey, version. So we got a little uh, World War III, huh? <laughs> yeah? You know what I'm saying? Bada bing, bada boom. And when I say bada boom, what I'm talking about is what <laughs> happened in Washington, D.C. Boom. It's gone. Good thing I wasn't there. I was at a strip club that night. <laughs> I was the one that was held back, you know, for in case of a catastrophic, uh, uh, you know, event. And it went bada boom. And uh, she was going bada bing on stage. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So yesterday, Antony Blinken uh, said those words. Israel is becoming indistinguishable from Hamas. Okay. All right. And Joe Biden, I mean, he laid it down on the terrorists. Okay. You know, all those terrorists, the uh, Houthis. <sighs> Man, they are just, they're so, they're vicious, those Houthis. So the Houthi terrorists have been, uh, you know, launching rockets at our ships, at the ships in China, everything else. They've been attacking the ships. And Joe Biden came out yesterday, I mean, with a strong, bada bing, he came out and he said, I don't know who the terrorists, and the who the terrorists decide that they won't launch any more missiles. I, I won't call them terrorists, okay? So... I'll I'll use a, a, a nicer descriptor uh, word for the Houthis. If they just stop bombing, I won't call them terrorists anymore. What's going on with his voice? Did he have several Red Bulls before this? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, wait, wait, wait. So the Houthis are like, oh, well, America won't call us terrorists anymore. That would be the opposite that they they want you to call them terrorists because it makes the Houthi sound scary. You really think, you know, I have really had, I've got a lot of sand in my ears because I grew up here in the desert, but I, I have 
I can't even say it. I have been so hurt by America calling us terrorists just for doing terrorist activity. What? They're not Harvard students. They don't have their feelings hurt by mean words. <laughs> the mean words are there. And they'll stop if I just stop launching rockets at their ship. <laughs> oh, my God. We're doomed. That was our fault. These things are always our fault. Like, if we would just improve our behavior, they'd stop shooting just missiles stop. at us. If we <laughs> would just... If we would just stop being so mean to the Gazans, they'd stop raping all the Israelis. Exactly It's, it's right. always our exactly fault. Exactly right. And they, you call them Gazans, and they're not. They're Palestinians. <laughs> Sorry, Palestinians. <laughs> How do they deal with you people? I mean, it, if we would just start, stop calling them the wrong name, they would they would stop yes. all, all the, the murder. Yes. I, I guess that's what we're... Every single time, it's always our fault. It's our fault that that because... Hamas, the people that were elected by the Palestinians, came across the quote-unquote border and murdered and raped a bunch of people. The, it's our fault that their citizens are not getting food and water now. That's that's because of us. Yes. It's not because of yes. the 150 citizens or 150 countries across the world who supported Hamas. I want to. Can I tell you something? I I would love to be a fly in the wall. At the National Security um, uh, Committee, and 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 listen to them in the bunker in the bowels of the basement of the White House, as they're saying, "Mr. President, things are getting a little crazy." Well, I mean, I got an idea. Let's just stop calling them terrorists. My gosh, President, Mr. President, that is genius. I think that is the greatest strategic move our military could ever. That is, you are a history maker. Mm. It could go as well as our withdrawal from Afghanistan. Well, to be fair about Afghanistan for just a second here, mm -hmm. they did send in multiple officials with no evacuation plan and within hours uh, after Kabul fell. So they decided to come up with a plan after the fall of Kabul, which wasn't at all foreseeable in the days leading up to that. Um, and hey, what are you going to do, right? Hey, are we still in Afghanistan? No. Bada bing. Bada boo. That would be a better press conference than the one that Blinken was giving.